introductions now to the housing white paper and I'm delighted to be joined by Ian Fletcher, Policy Director of the British Property Federation and great to have you uh, here today um, on, on Property Tribes TV. Very uh, auspicious day for, for the private rented sector. Interested to hear your review, your sort of views on, on the housing paper. Has it set out plans to fix a broken housing market? Uh, the British Property Federation, I think, is delighted with the, the white paper. Um, from a personal perspective, um, been advocating this, this built-to-rent sector for a number of years, and uh, I think we've got good recognition in the white paper as to the positive attributes of the sector and, and how to support it. Uh, but the BPF is about all different kinds of property investors, and uh, in that respect, um, yeah, there is a lot in that, the white paper as to how to get land brought forward, how to get how to get planning into the system, mm -hmm. uh, how to get the infrastructure built, um, new ways of building things. So yes, it's a, a, a real compendium of, of different things. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the build to rent sector, the institutional investors. Obviously, that's a, a kind of well-tested formula in London, but it seemed to me that the housing white paper kind of put it on much more of a national stage. It, uh, yes, the sector has been um, expanding outside of London for about the last year. Um, 2015, if you'd asked me, the vast majority of things that we saw coming through the development pipeline were in London. 2016 was actually a story of the regions and uh, we balanced out. So we estimate there's about 80,000 uh, built to rent um, units coming through the development pipeline. And roughly now that's 50-50 that's split, uh, so 40,000 in the regions, 40,000 in London. And uh, a real pleasure for me is just seeing the sector sort of reaching out beyond the the core cities the Manchester's the Liverpool's the Birmingham's and starting to find its way into some of the slightly smaller cities the Aberdeen's the Dundee's the Crawley's the Swindon's mm -hmm. uh, so yes this is becoming I think a, a national phenomenon. Do you think that the institutional investors will serve um, the sort of family market, the uh, the family that want a home with a garden in a good school catchment area, it, are they servicing that market? There are certainly players within this market, I can think of a company called, called Sigma for example, mm -hmm. that is very much about uh, houses, 10,000 10, houses in the north that they would like to build as build to rent and they have a, a very interesting sort of business model in terms of working very closely with local authorities to deliver that. But, mm -hmm. but uh, I think uh, people have heard at the conference today overall that that uh, yeah, build to rent will be as varied as most other markets. So if you think of hotel market, everything from travel lodge to uh, the landmark hotel. Um, mm -hmm. If you think of builders, everybody from uh, Upper Simmon through to uh, a Barclay Homes. And in the same way, build to rent will uh, try to cater for a number of different people at a number of different price points um, with a number of different services. I'm sure you understand that um, small landlords actually fear the rise of institutional investment. Do you think they're right to fear it? Is it going to push them out of the sector? I think um, in the short to medium term they have absolutely nothing to fear. You know, clearly the uh, private rented sector is and built uh, by to let um, providers to that smaller landlords uh, will still be the, the dominant player in that market. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at student accommodation I think built to rent actually rather than sort of threatening uh, smaller landlords mm -hmm. will act as a, a catalyst for um, I think sort of raising the, the game of the sector overall and mm -hmm. uh, you know, ultimately all, all markets have to be competitive and I'm sure small landlords will react and think about what they're doing and how they can um, augment their services to, to make sure they're able to compete. Indeed, and your event here today, your annual conference, it's, this has been very much the hot topic, hasn't it? And you had uh, a representative from government here as well. Did he add any other insights? Uh, he was excellent in terms of explaining what the white paper was about, so uh, the built to rent sector, um, it is proposed that government will provide it with additional planning support, uh, and but, but it's asking something back in terms of um, the sector providing three year tenancies and uh, that's something that we'll be clearly very keen to explore over the, the coming weeks. Um, we've done an initial trawl and I think 15 of the, the largest built to rent providers um, quite happy to offer three year tenancies, um, many of them are doing it already, yeah. uh, but um, yes we'll make a, a more formal announcement uh, uh, in due course. Fantastic, just to finish I guess, um, you know, maybe today has seen the launch of uh, a, a different private rented sector, 
are we seeing um, less fragmented, more professionalized, more institutionalized? Is that the way it's going? Yeah, clearly, um, yeah, there is, I think, uh, an appetite amongst institutional investors to get to get into the sector, and those institutional investors will come from both the UK and, and abroad in terms of pension funds investing. So, um, yes, I don't think the built-to-rent sector is going to go away, uh, but I equally don't, don't think it's uh, a threat, but, but actually uh, an opportunity in terms of the wider sector, uh, an opportunity for house builders to work as partners, it'll be an opportunity for local authorities to uh, find new ways of using their land uh, to drive income and uh, uh, be joint venture partners. And I think for, for small landlords it will provide a new form of competition which will actually lead to a better private rental sector overall. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for your contribution uh, with our interview, Ian. It's been a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.